Good evening and welcome. Tonight we are thrilled to host Urban Artistry with Goodfoot Dance Company and Bakari Wilder on the Millennium Stage for their performance of The Meaning of Buck Dance. This evening's performance is a part of the Kennedy Center's Local Dance Commissioning Project, which annually awards commissioning funds to dance artists from the DC metro area, and I encourage you to read more about the project in tonight's program. We are currently accepting applications for the 2014 commissions, and more information about that can be found on our website. Tonight, we invite you to stay for a brief Q&A with the artists directly following the performance. And now, please join me in welcoming Urban Artistry with Goodfoot Dance Company and Bakari Wilder to the stage.
the year is 1989, Memphis, Tennessee. Getting Buck to become extremely hype, wild, or carefree. A feeling of letting go of oneself completely. Gangster walking. The soul of Memphis music wrapped into a dance. Despite the blues of life, these dancers wanted to continue to walk with pride. It was a loose, groovy style from the mid-80s done to the Memphis rap sound of their time. While getting booked, gangster walking was about who could walk the coolest or most gangster. Shookin', the smooth version of the gangster walk. As the Memphis sound slowed down in the early 90s, so did the movement. Steps turned into slides, and the focus of being smooth and effortless started to take shape. The dancers began to emulate the personalities of pimpsters during this time and era. Chopping, the animated version of the gangster walk. This style came about when the dancer would stop very sharp and precise in order to accent different parts of the music, especially the lyrics of the song. This late 90s Memphis dance was heavily influenced by the animated movements from pop. <laughs> Bucking, the most dynamic version of the gangster walk. Bucking came into play when the music became so hype and so crunk that the dancers had to exhibit it in movement. The dancers were now using high flying moves that would typically land back on the one in the music. This style was used when the dancers wanted to get as buck as possible. <laughs>
Flatfoot, a style of solo improvised percussive dance from the Southern Appalachian mountain region, traditionally done to old time music, with roots in European step dance and West African and American Indian dance forms. See also buck dance, clogging, hoe down, jigging. Flatfooting, see previous definition, also characterized by a lower to the ground, flat-footed style of using heel-toe shuffles instead of toe-toe shuffles, a style of buck dance. Flat-footing, what hipsters say to distinguish themselves from the more commercialized style of contemporary cloggers. Clogging, a percussive dance form from the Southern Appalachian Mountain regions traditionally done to old-time music, in groups or solo. See flat-footing or buck dancing. A percussive dance form done in groups with formations taken from various square dance and other dance traditions to any kind of music, sometimes in white shoes with double or jingle taps and sometimes not. Buck dance, see flat footing, hoe down, clogging, jigging. Hoe down, see flat footing, clogging, jigging, buck dance. Jigging, see flat footing, Buck dance, hoe down, clogging.
Jack, and Jack had a groove, and from this groove came the grooves of all grooves. And while one day viciously throwing down on his box, Jack boldly declared, let there be house, and house music was born. I am, you see, I am the creator, and this is my house. And in my house, there is only house music. But I am not so selfish, because once you enter my house, it then becomes our house and our house music. And you see, no one man owns house, because house music is a universal language spoken, understood by all. You see, house is a feeling that no one can understand, really, unless you're deep into the vibe of house. House is an uncontrollable desire desire to jack your body and as I told you before this is our house and our house music and every house you understand there is a keeper and in this house the keeper is Jack now some of you might wonder who is Jack and what is it that Jack does Jack is the one who gives you the power to jack your body Jack is the one who gives you the power to do the snake Jack is the one who gives you the key to the wiggly worm Jack is the one who learns you how to walk your body. Jack is the one that can bring nations and nations of all jackals together under one house. You may be black, you may be white, you may be Jew or Gentile. It don't make a difference in our house. And this is fresh. fresh, 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 fresh. As we dance to a beat that seems out of time To the one you feel and the metronome of your mind Does it offend you that our rhythm looks strange Or causes your thinking to be rearranged? Could it be that you would understand this beat to which we dance More clearly had you been given a chance? So as you struggle to find the feel with your feet Ask yourself can you dance to my beat? So as you struggle to catch the rhythm with your feet, ask yourself, can you really dance to my beat? I think most dancers, they have a little imaginary beat in the head, but you had old guitar music and hand slapping. You know, they used to, a lot of times they didn't have any, no instruments, no music, and so they would start out hand slapping this. Many variations of it. You can just 
Then you can... Then you can add another lick to it. did something sort of this on the heel in our toe like that. So on the heel and your toe, that is called the buck. So when you raise it up on your toes, that's, you change it from a buck to a tap. So it goes. doing it but a little well a little you start the book I reckon you call it the book dance you'd say to you just I guess that's the way we started out, community gatherings on a weekend. The clip you just saw was from a documentary called Talking Feet, produced by Mike Seeger and Ruth Pershing. Ruth Pershing got a grant to study with the dancers that you just saw, Aljamay Hinton, uh, John D. Holman, and Frizz Holloway, and later taught some buck dance steps at a camp called the Shokin. One of the students in that class was a man named Matt Gordon, uh, one of my very first teachers, and he was really inspired by those steps to use some uh, improvisation and some choreography that was based on some of those musical motifs. Much later, uh, Matt Gordon, in a group called the Fiddle Puppet Dancers, uh, which later became Footworks, set uh, some, of that some of those steps into choreography that became known as the Buck Dance and remained in the Fiddle Puppet's repertoire long into when they were called Footworks Percussive Dance Ensemble, the group that I first got started with based in Annapolis, Maryland. They still do some of that choreography called the Buck Dance, and I learned it secondhand from a man named Mark Schatz. Some time later, I set a piece for myself, my wife Emily Olson, who's with us this evening, and Meg Madden in the early incarnation of Goodfoot Dance Company, and we still do a dance that we call the Buck Dance.
There are three definitions that I know about which are based on the particular perspective of the person you're asking. I think it means uh, like a, a movement practice that's associated with a particular geography. What we do when we improvise, which we call flat footing, would be considered buck dancing. And particular people. An early rural African American dance form more associated with both string band music but also with rural blues. I mean, I guess I think about happening in some kind of informal musical context. A lot of the rhythm dancers, the elder statesmen and rhythm dancers, talked about being buck dancers as children. That they, when they first started dancing, they did buck dancing. To them, you know, what they were doing was sort of an older style of tap. I guess I think about it as, as one of the main forms of Southern American dancing that makes rhythm with the body. And a lot of those dancers were actually born in the South and moved north when they became professional dancers. Staged tap dancing was refined from older traditional dances. Then it fed back into the traditions that it came from. As people moved from the country to towns, there was more and more trading of dance styles and steps. Often a dancer's most prized possession was the ability to express individuality and creativity. And traditional communities are not immune to new influences and stuff people would perform for their friends. But would they perform the same way as someone would if you put it on stage and there was a large audience out there? Because the performing for your friends who are on the same porch participating in the same event is quantitatively and qualitatively different from being on a stage and performing to a large audience that is strictly there to observe. Is it a construct of popular mythology of the folk community? To a modern clogger, buck dancing is sort of high-powered clogging. But it's kind of maybe in the like folk knowledge or folk mythology around American clogging and yeah. flat footing that people say buck dance is X. It's like they they, <laughs> they sort of fix it.
take me outside, sit in the green garden, nobody out there, but it's okay now, bathe in the sunlight, don't mind if rain falls, take me outside, sit in the green garden. Tree top, down again. Put my bag down, taking my shoes off, walking the carpet. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Christine Stone Martin. I'm the manager of dance programming.